What's up, guys? Triple C here. I want to talk about some current events, something that just recently happened in Brazil. It's a totally messed up story. A friend of mine from Brazil sent me the story and asked me what I thought about it. I looked into it, and like the most shocking part for me is the reactions I'm seeing on the internet from people. I'll also show you some video footage of what actually happened here. It'll come up in a second. But basically what happened, this kid, which you see in the pic here, 17-year-old kid from Brazil, um, stole a bicycle from a man with one leg leg and a tattoo artist and his buddy they saw him stealing the bike so they held him they put him in a chair held him down and gave him this tattoo on his forehead which basically translates to i'm a thief and i'm a loser and <clears throat> they filmed the whole thing put it up on the internet and up to now nobody knows where the boy is after that he disappeared and the parents of this kid saw this video online and social media and they called the police. The police then arrested the tattoo artist and his buddy and charged him with uh, torture, actually. And yeah, so that's basically the premise of the whole story. Now here you can also see some footage of them actually doing it. Absolutely disgusting. You can see that the kid is in absolute horror and, and shock as this is happening to him. And I mean, straight off the bat, you know, of course the boy was wrong stealing is wrong and probably people say stealing from a man that only has one leg makes it even worse i'm not sure that the courts would see it like that but it it still has this emotional factor stealing from a disabled person and of course he was wrong and he should have been punished definitely of course but appropriately and according to the law and what happened here the tattoo artist just took the matters into his own hands and this is basically just vigilante justice and it's just wrong on so many levels because um, vigilante justice always has emotional roots and it's short-sighted you know it's just not an appropriate punishment because it, it, it will be a different punishment every time regarding uh, dependent on how the perpetrator just feels in that moment and it should be a thought out and reasoned punishment for the crime committed you know and you should have a certain standard that you uphold that everybody gets punished uh, according to the same standard and not just some sadistic punk like in this video here that's like oh i caught this kid stealing a bike let me make a tattoo on his forehead i'm such a good guy you know f what the fuck is going on in your head like who do you think you are you know and <clears throat> There are all these arguments that this kid will never steal again and they taught him a lesson and there's a lot of people on the internet arguing like that and it's very shocking in my opinion because what really happened here, they maimed this kid for life, they tortured him, they they bra they filmed the whole thing, the, the whole incident, they bragged about it by making it publicly available on the internet and social media and they publicly shamed him, it's just so wrong on so many levels. I mean, this kid will never be able to find a job with this tattoo on his forehead, you know? Like, he, like to all those people saying he got what he deserved, probably because of this, what will actually happen, the real consequences, he'll probably remain criminal for the rest of his life. So yeah, well done, good job. And people can change, you know? Like, this kid is still very young, he's 17. You don't know what his future is gonna be, but definitely he's scarred for life and maimed for life, like, physically and emotionally. And we don't know his personal circumstances if this was just a one-time thing or if he's like an all-day criminal. But it doesn't matter because that's just not for certain bystanders to decide and take matters into their own hands. Like, what could also come out of this, like, what if this whole incident inspired the kid to also become a vigilante now? Like, what if he decides to take matters into his own hands and like plan some revenge on the tattoo artist it's definitely a very real situation imagine that happening to you like it it can really happen that this kid comes back and takes revenge on the tattoo artist and what do you have then you know and like or the father of the kid for example like the parents of this kid saw this video on social media imagine if you were the dad of this kid and would see this like what your feelings would be imagine if the dad takes matters into his own hands and wants to get back at the tattoo artist also very real possibility let's hope nothing like that happens but it could very well happen and i mean the police charged him like the tattoo artist and his buddy with torture and they will they they will get convicted for that and they will also have to pay for 
getting this tattoo removed, but you can never remove that 100%. You've still got the scar, and he's still going to carry that around with him for the rest of his life. And also, another thing, because so many people are talking in this manner, which I just find so shocking, all those people saying he got what he deserved and was okay to tattoo the guy's forehead and maim him for life, why don't you write like a letter to your local government and propose that that should be the actual punishment for theft and see what reactions you get, you know? See if anybody even takes you serious, if that would be a practical solution. Like your best shot would be that you would get like a message back of them asking you if you're actually deranged or if this is even, a, they probably, they won't even take it serious, you know? And imagine if that law would be passed, for example, like thousands or hundreds of thousands of thefts are committed every day. I mean, we'd have millions of people walking the earth with like stupid tattoos on their forehead. I mean, how ridiculous is this whole thing? How can you even defend this? And it goes even further, like what's the age limit? Like at what age should we start tattooing kids on their forehead if they stole something? Like at 10 years old, is it okay to tattoo a kid then? 14 years old, 16 year old, should we tattoo five or six year olds that stole a cookie from the cookie jar? I mean, come on. Or, or car thieves, for example, like how should we punish a car thief? Should we sew like an old rubber tire to their, back, to their back, which they have to carry around for the rest of their life so they don't forget the crime they committed? I mean, come on, like in the modern world we live in, that's just not the way it should go. And it's, it's actually a barbaric act and it's despicable. Now, I don't know anything about the backgrounds of these people all involved there, the tattoo artists, but I did see the video and I can tell you these guys were enjoying what they were doing, you know, it's like absolutely sadistic. And if experience has taught me one thing, people are generally always hypocrites, you know, like uh, what are the chances that the tattoo artist at some point in his life also made a mistake and also broke the law in some kind of sense? Like, does he feel that he should also be punished in a way like that? I bet not, you know, I bet not. And he was enjoying what he did, you know, and absolutely despicable and morally reprehensible. And they should definitely get the full punishment of the, of the applicable laws possible there. I mean, like, it's just Stone Age, Bronze Age shit what happened there. Like, two, tattoos like that, and actually in the Roman Empire, they did that with slaves. Slaves that stole, they got a tattoo on their forehead, you know? Like, that's what <laughs> this basically came down to. And also this publicly shaming thing, you know? Like, it's it's a practice that in, in, in a modern society, you know, in a secular progressive society is just not being done anymore that used to be done way back hundreds of years ago and in some societies unfortunately it's still being done but in our modern secular societies we don't do that anymore and there's a very good reason for that it's just like i said it's morally reprehensible and just completely disgusting you know we don't tar and feather people anymore we don't whip their hands and their feet or do shit like this i want to actually read like a quote from wikipedia um what i looked up today in regards to public shaming what it says on wikipedia and um, I mean, this is all basically scientifically derived. And it says, public shaming can result in negative psychological effects and devastating consequences, regardless of the punishment being justifiable or not. It could cause depression, suicidal thoughts, and other severe mental problems. The humiliated individuals may develop a variety of symptoms, including apathy, paranoia, anxiety, PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, etc. The rage and fury may arise in the persecuted individual themselves, lashing out against innocent victims as they seek revenge or as they uh, or as means of release. So, basically, that's what this whole thing might be set up for. You know, like that's why I said it's wrong on so many levels. Nothing good can come out of this. Stuff like this just leads to more negativity and it's just all a vicious cycle. So like in retrospect, of course, like I said in the beginning, the kid was absolutely wrong to steal the bike, but like his punishment wasn't 
no proportion at all to what happened and i really hope that all's well with him that nothing bad happens to him or that he doesn't do anything stupid and shame on that tattoo artist for doing what he did and the friend of his and bragging about it and shame on anybody supporting that i don't know i'm out peace